one. Um, I know it's on on my clock. It says uh, five uh, five fifty nine, and we're getting started at six. So it's close enough. Uh, close enough for me. Um, so my name is Kat Kane. I'm an advisor for the College of Education Social Services, and um, I'm here today with um, Will and Phyllis, and I will let them introduce themselves. Um, I'll hand it to Phyllis. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Phyllis Stone, and I am the Director of Student Services and Retention. And I'm super new, so I'm going to turn it back over to the advisors. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Will Major. I'm an advisor in SAS Student Services as well. Um, and I advise students in middle level art, music education, as well as the undeclared students and individually designed majors in SES. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take you through just try and orient you a little bit to what you can expect as you as you make your way um, to UVM um, and how we can help support you. Um, so we'll be kind of going back and forth. And um, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to add them to the chat. Um, and we'll try and get to those. And we'll also stay at the end um, a little bit before uh, before signing off in case you have any questions that you want to make sure you kind of just ask us uh, on a one on one basis. Um, and with that, Will, I'll, I'll leave it with you. At least this. Well, time. so uh, so this is our dean of the College of Education and Social Services, Katie Shepard. She is the uh, Levitt Family Green and Gold Scholar and a professor of special education. Uh, if you attended an ASV, you got to hear a little bit about how she feels about CES. And uh, if you if you didn't, you'll see her at orientation. Um, I think one of the really um, special things about CES is that the faculty, the dean, the staff, they they will know your name and they are going to care how you're doing. So um, if you see Katie in the halls, feel free to stop her, have a conversation. She's uh, a really, really wonderful po person. Um, and this is our CES mission. It is a bit long, so I'm just going to kind of run through the highlighted portion, which is um, emphasizing experiential learning, preparing you for immediate success once you um, have graduated from our college. And um, so with experiential learning, we we I mean, I don't think there is a major that isn't out and about in the community um, kind of within your first year. I know that my early childhood students are out in, in working with kiddos in their first year and getting community work um, and engaging with their their discipline. I also like social workers are, are doing the same. Um, and we we really want to ensure that you are feeling prepared by the time you get reach the end of your of your degree. So there are a lot of opportunities um, throughout your academic career to engage um, with your discipline in a number of different ways. Um, in terms of academic quality, we'll kind of uh, hit on this where all of uh, all of our faculty are somehow engaged in a form of research. I know a number of students, um, if they can choose to um, work with a faculty member and kind of help um, pair their interests with faculty research that is occurring. Um, and so our mission really is just to ensure that you have a really successful, really strong education as you move through um, move through our programs. All right, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about FERPA. FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Um, so this is a federal law that um, protects your privacy as a college student. 
um, you are now the 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 stewards of your academic records um, and we cannot disclose any aspect, any information with anyone outside of UVM without your permission. Um, so coming up, you're probably meeting with your advisor in the next couple of weeks. We strongly encourage you to um, just do it one on one at first. If you do want a parent or a family member with you, then um, I'm going to put the FERPA form in the chat. Um, and it is good for one academic year. So maybe you want some support this first year, um, but then maybe next year you don't feel like you need that. It'll expire um, and you would need to fill out a new one before we, we say anything to your parents or, or anyone at all. Um, and if you want to take a quick look, it's a pretty simple form. Doesn't take very long to fill out. Um, the only one thing I do want to emphasize is alcohol and drug violations are not protected by FERPA, um, but everything else is. So I think I think that's FERPA. Am I missing missing anything? Nope. I I think you got it. Yeah. Um, and then so student services. We all work uh, in the Department of Student Services a little bit about what we do. Um, I'm sure by now you have received uh, far too many emails. Um, a number of them uh, have probably come from our office um, asking you to make uh, an academic advising appointment. So that will be with who will be your academic advisor for this upcoming year. Um, and when we say we provide this customized advising, we have like, so Will has his particular programs. I have mine. We have another advisor um, who's currently overseas right now. Um, I'm a little jealous, uh, but he also has um, his specific programs that he works with. Um, and we uh, try and ensure that the areas you're interested in kind of pair nicely with the discipline that you're in. Um, we take into consideration, do you want to study abroad? Do you want to try and do an accelerated master's program? Did you want to pick up a minor or place-based education certificate? So, and we try and work with you to ensure that you have the best kind of academic advice experience that takes you into account as as a whole student trying to engage in a number of different things uh, we track your academic progress so we'll we'll help go through your degree audits we'll we'll try and reach out if we if we see anything that we're like maybe maybe you need additional support um, and we help you explore your interests we have a number of students who try out the first semester of whatever they've chosen and they're like maybe i maybe that's not the right fit we don't take it personally if if you have something that comes up and you're like oh i i i don't know if i want to teach middle schoolers which that's that's valid that's that's a tough tough group but they can also be wonderful and maybe you want to then explore um psychology which is in another which is in another college we're, we're more than happy to kind of help you explore whatever pathways interest you and help you um, be successful in whatever transition that looks like uh, we also help around various university policies so we'll just talk about FERPA which is kind of one of these larger federal policies um, UVM itself has a number, a big one that comes up for students regularly is this add drop withdraw period. The first two weeks um, of classes is kind of like a shopping period, so you can add and drop um, courses. Uh, and then anytime after that is a withdraw period. And if you have any questions about like, how do I navigate a withdraw? Can I add or drop? this course we're always here to to kind of touch we you can touch base with us we can talk to you about it um and kind of see what we can do to make sure you have a successful semester um another thing you may get to class and you well you will get to class and you'll read a you'll get a syllabi um and some faculty uh may have it stated on their syllabi that you can have so many number of excused or unexcused absences one thing our department does and you can reach directly out to whomever your advisor is would be to 
issue a flexibility request on your behalf. If you have to be out for any reason, you don't you don't feel well, uh, family or personal something, life comes up, it comes up for all of us. Um, we can help ask for flexibility on your behalf. Ultimately, the faculty have the final say on how they want to count those within their syllabi, um, but often getting those notices from us helps uh, help students kind of um, gain the flexibility that they need. We're also here to help you connect with, and, and we'll talk about them, um, any number of academic, health-related, and identity um, identity centers throughout campus. Um, I know I've walked a number of students to various places to ensure that they feel connected. All right, let's talk about some academic resources on campus. Um, the Center for Academic Success uh, gives you access to uh, peer tutoring where you can have individual tutoring just one on one. You can also sign up for uh, group tutoring. They also provide um, study skills sessions as well. So if you need help organizing your assignments, figuring out like how to prioritize and schedule your week, then they are there to provide support. Um, and if you you might be familiar with Navigate, but Navigate is um, how you can schedule appointments with your advisors, but also how you can schedule appointments with tutors um, and some other folks on campus as well. There's also the uh, First Scholars is a tutoring program uh, designed to meet the needs of, of first generation students. Um, in the Howe Library, which is right across the green from uh, the Waterman building is the Writing Center. Um, in your first semester, first year, you'll um, hopefully take a class called Written Expression, which really um, sets the foundation to get you prepared to uh, for college level writing. Um, so the Writing Center does edits, revisions, proofreading, uh, any support around um, around writing or papers and things like that. Um, and then there's uh, Student Accessibility Services that provides academic accommodations. If you've had a 504 plan, um, they will meet with you. I will put the link in the chat. Um, basically how you would get started is you would go to this uh, link. You would click on the getting started form on the right hand side and um, you'd fill out a few questions um, and then that would prompt someone from that office to set out set up a meeting with you and figure out what accommodations works work best and what would best support you. Also, if you know things come up and let's say you get like a concussion or need extra accommodations, then um, they will work with you throughout if, if things change. Uh, I would say if you are interested to get get started this summer, that way um, it's a lot easier to, to have them and not need them than need them the week before exams um, and have a, have a timeline. So that's Student Accessibility Services. There's the Career Center as well, which provides, you know, interview prep, uh, cover letter and resume, uh, revisions, editing. Um, they're over in the uh, Davis Center as well. Uh, you can schedule appointments through, um, I can't remember their, their platform, but it's not Navigate. Um, but we also, every Wednesday, uh, we are going to have a career coach in the Waterman building in the Sestune Services office uh, for an hour each week. Um, so if you're in the building, want to stop by. Uh, it's never too early to start thinking about career development, professional development opportunities. It's also a really good way to start thinking about your major and how you're going to apply it, even if you know you're, there's no rush. Um, but that's a career center. Um, and then there's the Department of Education, which is right down the hall from our office where the Director of Licensure, Patrick Halliday, works. And he does, um, he provides support around Praxis Core and Praxis Two preparation, which are these exams for students who are in uh, education licensure tracks. And also, we we mentioned SES Student Services. We have snacks and coffee and tea. If you're ever, you know, in the building 
and need a little pick me up, we're we're here for that. There's also um, the transfer affairs office, where if you're bringing in AP scores or any other college level credits, they help you bring those in, figure out where they go. Um, I definitely recommend if you if you have them, submit them. Um, even if they just show up as electives, that could be the thing that gets you to uh, to degree completion, which which is always, you know, a great thing. Um, anything I'm missing, Kat? I don't think so. I think you I think you got it. Got it all. Um, all right. And now some community resources. This screen went really quickly and I, I OK, it is the right slide. Um, so community resources, places where you can find additional areas of support. So for well-being, general health, um, we have the Center of Health and Wellbeing, also known as Student Health Services. So you may find yourself not feeling super well um, and it like you get a cold, something something comes up um, and you're especially if you're from out of state and your primary is out of state. Uh, we have health services on campus for you to kind of meet with a healthcare professional um, to figure out what's going on um, and to help to help support your health. Uh, we also have um, a center in the Davis Davis Center area called Living Well um, and Living Well is like if you're feeling good and you're, and you're you're feeling healthy this is a great place to be because they have snacks they have chill areas they have uh i think they offer meditation they have dog therapy they have light therapy they have massage therapists who will come in every now and then they have a massage chair um so they just have a lot of resources to help students continue to live really uh healthy, relaxing, live your best life. That's that's what Living Well does, is they help you live your best life. Um, and then we also have uh, counseling and psychiatry or psychiatric services, also known as CAPS. You'll hear that often referred to as CAPS. Um, so things come up for all of us, you know, life, life is life and we never know what what to expect. So if there ever is a time things are coming up, transition, transitions are stressful, um, being in a new place is anxiety inducing, maybe something in your own personal life comes up, there are people on campus to help you kind of navigate how to um, kind of handle any any emotions that may be coming up or or help you work through um whatever um have a uh, campus rec sports a number of uh, other varsity sports there's also just like the, the like you have access to the gym um you can go and just Again, live your live your best, healthiest life. Um, I believe they still I'm I'm kind of old, but I believe they still have an indoor track area. I haven't been in that facility for a minute. Um, and I know that uh, if your advisor is Eric Braun, he goes almost every day over uh, over to the gym and and works out. Um, so that's always that's always a good place to be. Um, we also partner with identity centers and then there are just identity centers available to you. So one is the Interfaith Center. Um, this is on a really nice, calm part of campus, very welcoming area and space. Um, you do not have to have any particular religious affiliation. You, They welcome all faiths. Um, you also don't have to think that or or believe in any particular faith or spirituality if you're looking for just a place to kind of go explore maybe some of life's larger questions like we're all in helping professions and how do we help in this world that sometimes it's like how how do we help how do we make a difference um the the director there is wonderful and um the space is super calm and they host 
monthly, I believe it's monthly, monthly dinners for students. And you can just, you can go, you can just go and eat and then, and then leave and then just, you know, go about your, go about your day. We have the PRISM Center for LGBTQIA plus identifying students and allies. So um, if you're looking for resources, if you are looking for a safe space, um, uh, if you're, if you become friends with someone on campus and they're struggling with various aspects of their identity and you want to help them find safe spaces um, or, or figure out how to connect with um, the larger LGBTQ community within Burlington. They have wonderful uh, resources. We also have the Mosaic Center for Students of Color. They do a lot of programming for predominantly for our BIPOC students, but I, I believe the director, Ahmed, would agree that they they welcome all. They want they want to see students engaging in spaces and supporting one another. Um, the one thing I do love is every Friday they have a breakfast for student. Well, for anyone on campus, faculty, staff, students, you well, if you go, you will probably run into us there at some point. Um, we host one of the breakfasts, um, and uh, that's always that's always super fun. And then we have the Women and Gender Equity Center. This will be often referred to as Wage. Wage is, um, I think it's this wonderful little house. It has a backyard. They do. Um, they do a lot of events. They had a Halloween event this past this past year that was like super big um they have gender inclusive spaces they have just a living room where you can sit and chill and feel like you're in a like back back in a home um and always have snacks these are all super welcoming places for all students to kind of engage with um i uh, i cannot see and i i know the majority of people who work in all of these and uh, they're not going to be turning any student away who's looking to connect in with them. Will, anything I'm for getting in in any of that? Nope, we do have uh, one question coming through in the chat. Um, is psychiatric counseling included in tuition? That is a really good a great question. question. And I, I don't want to misadvise you um, and give you the wrong information, um, but I believe, I believe if you. I can actually uh, put in the chat, I can go to the site and it, it lets okay. them know that it's part of their tuition. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop that in. Okay, awesome. And then we, we won't misadvise you. We'll, we'll just get you, get you the information that that's a great question. Um, any other questions coming through um, about any of the any services or anything that we've covered so far? Or we That's all we've gotten so far. We we knew all the answers to the questions last night, so um, you, you stumped us. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, programming that our office puts on. Um, I also just want to after after we we talk through all of these, uh, I just want to say we're always really interested in hearing what you all want to see happen. Um, the student voice, student perspective is really important to our office. So if you have an idea and want some help to make it happen, um, let us know. Start up a conversation. We'll we'll see what we can do. Um, so community uh, is one of our oldest programs. There isn't always tea, but there's almost always pizza. Um, it is a program designed for first year students to really just like help you find your community in the first weeks, that first year. Um, we have a bunch of activities already planned. I'll let Kat talk about those in a minute. Um, it's a really cool way to uh, get connected with the Burlington community, the SES community, and the overall UVM community. Um, then we have BIPOC CES Connect, which is programming provided for uh, all of CES students who identify as BIPOC. Um, each semester we put on um, 
an event for BIPOC Wellness, which is a collaboration with the Mosaic Center and Living Well. Um, and they have massages and med all kinds of things. It's really, really awesome event. Um, then we have the SES First Gen Collective, which is um, programming provided for uh, SES students who identify as first gen um, just to help navigate that process and also provide some professional development opportunities as well. Um, and then, yeah, there's the SES Student Services. Um, and we have snack tea advising and basically just all around support. I am going to put in one quick plug for the student advisory board, um, which is a group of students who um, collaborate and provide pr student perspective to uh, initiate change in the college. So if you're interested in joining a really really awesome group really interested in and in moving things forward within the college uh, i definitely recommend um looking into that yeah awesome and i the the well i don't remember the title for sab the sab the person who the student who is running sab this year will be at orientation and we'll kind of provide you some more information we'll have some some handouts there for you so if you want to look at what they have been doing what they will be doing um, and how you can get connected in we'll make sure that you get all that information um, and then with these programs what's coming up um, if you so we have art hop coming up art hop is a um, annual arts kind of fest that the city of Burlington hosts. Uh, what we have historically done is ensure that we can bring students down to Art Hop, down to the Pine Street kind of arts district. Um, this is a really great way to kind of see. I think it's a super fun neighborhood. I'm I'm in that area, I feel like every week. Um, and then you get to go into different artist studios. You kind of get to wander around in spaces that are not necessarily always open to the public because it's where people work. Um, and you get to see um, some really some really interesting things. See what the community itself has been has been producing in in the arts world. Uh, we'll have a civic engagement quest. This is kind of like. Um, like a scavenger hunt, we'll have clues and QR codes, and uh, it's kind of a more fun way to bring you through the city of Burlington itself to go to some of the nonprofit sites and school sites that we have uh, within walking distance from the campus. And this is a way to not just familiarize yourself with the surrounding area, um, get to know each other, but also these might be places you're interested in potentially um, doing your practicum in. Uh, if you're in elementary education, you might find yourself going to one of the elementary schools that we have in the city. Or if you're in early childhood, um, I know for a fact that you will be going to one of the the sites that we will we will be stopping at. So it's a great way to engage. Um, we're gonna have a kind of a general community get together. These are often a kind of like a paint and tea situation where there's some form of craft, a low key chill. Um, that picture above with students and the pizza. That's basically what it looks like everyone's just kind of hanging out there is an activity but it's really not enforced a lot of people just like just like eating their pizza and talking to their friends and that's valid um we will also have a study abroad fair where you can learn about um what is open to you not just through the college itself the college has a number of study abroad uh, programs. We, our director of licensure just got back from France. He took a group over for, for two weeks. So you'll hear about the programs we have in the college, but um, there will also be someone from the Office of International Education to talk about some of the programs not offered through CES, but offered through the institution and help you understand and navigate what the process of beginning to study abroad looks like and get some of those those ideas going. A um, few things not on here, but that we will be involved in. Will mentioned one 
which is the BIPOC wellness event. BIPOC Sess Connect pair, pairs up with um, Living Well, ESEMS, a number of other campus partners to do a wellness event. Um, there's always food. Michael buys all of the pizza and all of the wings. Um, and then for first gen uh, coming up, if you are a first gen student or somebody who identifies as the first person in their family to pursue a higher education degree, um, there is a first gen orientation. I will be at that one um, talking about academic advising, um, but first gen at UVM also has a number of programs, events. Um, they, they like to ensure that their first gen students remain connected. So there we always try and partner with them and ensure that we can provide that same support. Uh, well, did I did I cover those programs? Seem seem reasonable? Yeah, that was great. Uh, we do have one one question coming coming in through the chat. Uh, how do we go about pursuing a second major that's not within CES? Is there somewhere to sign up? Um, so I'll, I'll take that one. We do have a new uh, offering this year called a co-major. Um, there, it's slightly limited as to what is being offered through the co-major, but basically, um, we ran into some obstacles with, with dual degrees because you were having to fulfill the requirements of one college and the requirements of another. So the way that co-majors work is that you would only be required to fulfill the requirements of one college and then the major requirements of what your co-major would be. Um, so it ends up being kind of like a, a big minor um, is sort of uh, one way to think about it. But we do also have dual degrees, uh, dual degree options. That's just going to take, um, and it's easier in some majors in CES than others. So that's just going to take some careful planning with your advisor to figure out how that's going to how that's going to fall. Um, the way you would sign up or declare another major, another minor would be through your My UVM portal. Um, it's under, and I always forget, I believe it's under the registrar tab. Um, and then on the right hand side, there's an option to change or declare a major or minor in your college or another college. And then um, that would be the way you do it. Um, and then for next steps, I kind of, we kind of already mentioned this, went over this, but if you have not signed up for um, your academic advising appointment yet with your advisor, there should be an email in your UVM inbox. You will want to check that. We have not been sending communications to anything outside of your UVM email. It'll be really important to begin to to get used to to checking that one um and if if you haven't for whatever reason if you, if you go in there and i know that there's a lot of communications coming through if you go in there and you have you don't see it or you feel like it got lost somewhere you can always reach out to us our contacts will be on the the last slide and we can make sure that we connect you with your advisor so that you can meet with them um we will be using Microsoft Teams for these appointments uh, to go kind of make sure you understand and have opportunity to like understand your program, have an opportunity to ask your advisor questions and get to know your advisor. Um, so if you have not downloaded Microsoft Teams or unfamiliar with Microsoft Teams, this would be a really good time to begin to, to play around with it. Um, and then in those appointments, we're going to be again reviewing what are what are some of the resources we have available to you. What does your schedule look like? You have been block scheduled into classes. Um, there's room to kind of play around with things so that you have some choice in in what you're taking. Um, and will am I forgetting anything on this? No, no, I don't think so. Um... So uh, right before your appointment, you'll just get we'll we'll call you via Microsoft Teams. So if you don't get a link, um, don't. It'll be OK, we'll 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 get there.
All right. And then just in the chat, if you wanted to add one thing you learned, one thing you're still curious about, any questions you may have, one thing you might be excited for, um, we'd love to hear from you, um, especially if you have some of those lingering curiosities that we may not have covered that maybe we could help answer um, before, before we wrap things up tonight. We'll give it we'll give it a minute. And will you let me know if things things are coming through? I can do that. What will you be asking your advisor in your first meeting? What will you be asking your advisor in your first meeting? <laughs> no, someone someone said I learned what I'll be asking my advisor. Oh, so I'm, I'm oh. curious. What are you? What are you? Gonna, <laughs> will we have access to the slideshow or a transcript of what we went over today? Yes. Um, we this was recorded, so you will get a copy of of this exact presentation. Um, how many people in total are in the CES program? Definitely expecting to see more than 30 here today. We like to say that CES is one of the more intimate colleges on campus. Um, I think undergrad, we've got somewhere between 700 and 800, and all in all, grad programs included, we're somewhere around 11, 1100. Um, the great thing about a college this size is that you have access to large university resources, but you also have that and you also have the environment of a smaller college. You'll be in you'll start off with some larger lecture style classes, but then as you progress in your programs, the classes are going to get smaller and you're going to start being in the same classes with the same people. Um, so it's a really tight knit community. Learn that there is a co-major option, and I'm curious about learning more about the study abroad options. I learned how CES has snacks everywhere. I'm excited for the snacks. Yes, me too. Um, does course selection happen at our meeting with our advisor, or is it more informational? Kat, you want to take that one? Yeah, so what Will and I were working on uh, earlier today is we have a rough draft of all of your schedules. So you have been, we we know your programs, we know the courses that, um, that you need to be kind of in to stay on track for your majors. CES um, is one of those colleges on campus that has some pretty tight course sequencing. Um, but when you meet with your advisor, there, there will be an opportunity to be a little flexible, see if there are, I know for a number of my students, I have, you know, certain classes they need to be in, but I have spaces where you can be like, actually, I want to explore. I don't know why I'm so interested in it these days, but there's a really cool plant biology class that I'm kind of like, I think I might need to take that one, plants, food, and culture. It's got my name all over it. Um, and so we can, you can have a conversation with your advisor about what are your interests, what are you, what are you excited to learn about, what is, what is one of those things you kind of want to lean into because you are either curious or you might want to minor in it. We have a number of amazing programs. I know a, often a lot of students are like, I want to maybe take ASL, and can I, can I pick that up and put that on my schedule or a minor in, in psychology? I don't know why I'm picking on psychology tonight, but yeah. So you have classes. I don't know if I'm answering this question, but you have classes and there will be an opportunity to explore what those options are with your advisor. Yep, right now your your, your schedule is just a rough draft. So between now and the ad drop period that Kat mentioned earlier, um, there's a lot of opportunity for, for change. So even if during this meeting with your advisor, 
maybe you don't get into all the classes that you're really excited about. There's still options further on before the semester starts where we can meet again. I know that uh, in July AP scores get transferred in. So if you've taken AP English or an AP language course, um, then that credit could be fulfilled and we could revisit your schedule and maybe make some changes then. Um, let's see what else. Um, excited to explore art hop. I'm curious about Microsoft Teams. I'm still figuring out Microsoft Teams. I think we all are. Um, and uh, is it possible to fulfill 60 credits within a year? Um, it's not not so allowed how many? 60. I don't know how I don't know how you would be able to do that. Um, I think so. OK, so we recommend taking 15 credits each semester. That seems to be a manageable amount for most people. Uh, everyone is different. Uh, the most you can take without having to pay for additional credits is 19. Um, let me see what else. So ultimately you need 120 credits to graduate from UVM. Um, and 15 credits each semester gets you to that 120 mark in a nice four year period. And for some reason, our society picked four years as the number to take. It's different for everyone, um, but that's where 15 kind of comes from. Um, and each program is a little bit different. I know music education folks end up taking a little bit closer to 18 credits each semester. If you're in, a, it'll also depend on how many transfer credits you have coming in. Um, I know that that we have some students who transfer in a whole bunch of classes and they take 30 plus credits during the the regular term um and so there is a possibility that by the end of of your first year there are 60 uh 60 credits gone if this and i'm that this might not be the intention of the question but if this is a curiosity about like how do I potentially speed up my my graduation date or is there any way for me to move through my program faster? Um, I would just recommend having a, that conversation with your advisor um, and learn the program a little bit more to see to see what that would look like. So, um person who learned what they wanted to ask their advisor. They said that they had asked about study abroad opportunities. Um, curious about when secondary education majors start going into the field. Uh, excited about events like Art Hop. So secondary education majors will uh, you will be in a course called uh, I actually don't know the name of it. I can only think of the course code right now. It's called EDT 1010, um, but it has a better name. Um, Teaching to make a difference. Teaching to make a difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that is a civic learning course where you will go out into the schools and start getting some experience. Um, just observing and seeing seeing different different strategies, different approaches to education. Um, I know specifically, you know, the really great thing about secondary education when it comes to studying abroad is you have a lot of options. I know Galway is one uh, program that is that seems to be really popular with secondary ed students, but the way that that program set up studying abroad is that you can um, make sure that you take your education courses here at UVM, and then when you go abroad, you'd be taking your content courses or your uh, CAC core courses and having those fulfilled wherever you go. So you you have some, some options. Uh, one other question, I miss who we connect about transferring a college credit I got while in high school. Um, that's going to be the transfer affairs office. Within the registrar. You can always Google UVM transfer credits. It should bring you to some type of a page or you can also always make a note to bring that back up with your academic advisor or. 
Um, you can always, I can't tell on my side if this, uh, you can always send an email or give us a call um, at SES Student Services and, and we can help you navigate that process. You'll be reaching, reaching one of us. Um, we, we answer uh, all these lines. So um, yeah, for transfer credits, always, always wonderful to just transfer in as many as possible, as many as possible. Well, that's everything in the chat. We'll stick around for a few more minutes if we if we didn't answer your questions or if you uh, have anything else that you want to talk to us about, um, feel free to stick around. Thank you for being with us tonight. We're excited to meet you all in person in August at orientation, um, and we're excited to work with you this year.